Yo, what's going on guys? It's Russ. And in this video, I want to talk about my day one rate build. Now, I know this is a little bit early since the rate does come out on March 5th, but I can't ever see anything in this build actually changing armor wise and even subclass wise once the rate finally launches. The only thing that is subject to change is some of the weaponry. But even now, I think we all have a pretty decent understanding of what we're going to bring in and what is probably going to be the best DPS. So with that knowledge, just know that some of this maybe will change. If you guys would like to see an updated video, be sure to let me know. And this build is going to be on the Warlock because that is what I'm going to play going in day one and if you need help figuring out what you want to run or just learning a end game content build i really hope this video can help you out and if it does help you out and you'd like to see more builds or even some other destiny videos be sure to check out the channel and if you like what you see consider subscribing and dropping a like but with all that being said let's just jump right into what i'm going to be running on day one all right so starting off i do want to say that this is going to be going in depth with everything weaponry armor armor mods subclass everything like that so starting off first things first is the subclass it's the easiest thing to go over and we're going to be running Shade Binder. Shade Binder is insanely good for act control or just slowing enemies down itself because of things like Bleak Watcher. You probably already know or have seen a lot of Bleak Watcher builds. This is gonna be very similar, but essentially Bleak Watcher is just a little turret that you can you know, make and it's just gonna slow and freeze everything for you. It's insanely good for in-game content or just hard content because you don't know what's coming at you. And this is frankly just gonna stop whatever's coming at you and not come at you like it's very very good it's insanely strong now i'm also going to be running glacial harvest so if i freeze an enemy they're going to spawn a stasis shard stasis shard is going to play heavily into our mods and on top of that you do get some melee energy back but that isn't too much but now getting into the fragments we actually are running whisper of fissure so this is basically going to make all the frozen targets that i have basically blow up do more damage and kill more enemies which is really really good then whisper of durance so my slow for abilities last longer so now the stasis turret is going to be even more effective which is really really good then whisper of bonds so whenever i defeat a frozen target i'm going to get some super energy and super energy is going to play really well with this build with some of the weapons i'm using which i'll get into in one second but this is very good because of all the frozen targets you're going to defeat with this subclass you get a bunch of super energy then we have whisper of torment so you gain grenade energy each time you take damage from targets so you're pretty much going to be able to constantly have a bleak watcher up with this build which is very very good now getting into the guns i'm actually going to be running eager scepter to start off with if you don't know this is the gun based when you get a kill it's got a spawn a slow freeze aoe effect around the enemy and basically freeze everything this pairs really really well with your aspects with things like glacier harvest because you're going to get those states of shards then even things like whisper bond so you're going to kill all the frozen targets which is going to give you your super now getting your super is very beneficial for the a your scepter because when you actually have the catalyst you can essentially hold r to drain your super and make this thing a machine like it does insane damage it freezes and slows when you hit enemies it becomes a monster like it, the magazine is increased like it does anything you think of that's what it does and it makes ad clear just insanely insanely good for this now you might be thinking why would you just not use the super if you're trying to act clear and that is a possibility that you can but if you are running the aegis scepter it's going to actually have more uptime uh, from the super itself so the super can you, you know you can pop it kind of freeze and kill everything but if you you know play it smart the aegis scepter is going to get a lot more benefit out from it and you can just absolutely destroy with this thing now we'll get into the other weapons in a second but for the main loadout i'm also going to be running a under your skin now this might come to a shock to a lot of you but since it is going to be you know tanky targets i'm going to run this with archer's tempo explosive payload this is pretty much the god where you can get on it i want to get where i can craft it so i can get a faster draw time but i have to unlock that i'm one away from actually unlocking the craft for it i'm also gonna be running things like minor spec on it just to make sure we kill red bar enemies in one shot which is good but between that and explosive payload you should be able to and the final interesting thing about this bow is that it actually comes with the origin trait land tank so final blows of this weapon grants increased resilience and additional damage resilience from combatants so this is essentially kind of just lets you be even more tankier have more health essentially whenever you get kills with this bow which is going to be very very good in a day one raid in between the roll archer simple and explosive payload and this perk alone this is the main reason i would 100 recommend trying to farm this and craft it up for yourself between this and some of your other armor mods over here you're going to be very very tanky and then i also might run something like the battler as well so just in case i need to get stasis turrets back uh, this is going to allow me just to spam turrets everywhere specifically with this gun you don't really have to use this but if you want to have your know, two three turrets on the field at once this is the gun you want to use but if you just want to you know have one and every now and then maybe two definitely just use something else that you're very comfortable with but now again i will get back into these other weapons finally i'm just going to be running a rocket launcher this is a rocket i would definitely recommend getting it has fill prep and frenzy which you can get the enhanced perks since this is a craftable weapon 
Fill prep and frenzy are great perks. Frenzy is very good for damage and reload speed. Fill prep is also very good for ammo reserves and reload speed. All around, very, very good rocket. But if you have another rocket you like, you could also run that. But if you don't, I would definitely recommend getting this one. Now, getting into our other weapons, just to kind of explain everything. I'm going to be running Austria Striga with the Catalyst by then. To basically act clear the entire room if I need to. You can kill one enemy and pretty much everything else is going to die. This is just a very good act clear exotic that I'm going to be running. But then I'm also going to have Outbreak Perfected if there's any long range act clear scenarios or if my other teammates are running Outbreak Perfected. All the Nanites can go and just kill everything. Very, very good. Obviously, I'm going to be running with a horde just in case. Even with the exotic primary buffs, with the horde is still insanely good. It's still one of the best Ackler weapons in the game. You can just shoot it out a door and you spawn, and they pretty much all die. Then I'm also going to run a Fate Ranger just, you know, in case I need to, you know, have a hand cannon on hand just to, you know, get some firefall procs to stun everything. Then Nightwatch, Overlook, supposed to payload. Very good weapon for long range targets. Just anything that is super tanky. Then Succession, again, if there's some majors long range, you're going to be able to kill them with this. Then I also run a Partner Dust because this is a blinding grenade launcher. I would 100% always recommend taking a blinding grenade launcher with you in any in-game scenario. And obviously a day one raid is a place you're going to want that at. But now in our energy slot, we have Tiku's Divination. This is very, very good for our single targets. Tiku's is like one of the best exotics in the game that is very, very underrated. It's very good at taking on majors. Plus it now has that 40% damage buff to monitors. You're going to be able to destroy this thing just clear out an entire room of ads if you need to speaking of clearing out entire room of ads debt messenger is also going to be running if there's shields in there you need to take out this obviously has access to every element you're going to be able to act like crazy very very good grenade launcher uh i'm also going to be taking a glaive just in case a glaive is something i need i do need to get some better perks on here before i do that but i am going to be taking the enigma just to have the glaive then I'm going to have an Uzume again, just to have a very hard hitting sniper rifle. I know this isn't the hardest of hitting, but it is very, very good, especially with this roll of bottom and screen because you can take a depth big one spec and warp bolt, and it's just all around a very good sniper. I'm also going to be taking a Reckless Oracle. Now, I probably will swap this out to the new Vice SMG if I can get that, but if I need to run something like Void, I can actually run Volatile Rounds, and this is just going to be able to act clear an entire room just on the gun itself. That is if I do have to switch to something like Void, which I do have a built setup for. You guys would like to go watch that one. Then I also have the battle, which I kind of already talked about with Demo Adrenaline Junkie. Again, just to get grenades back. Then Truth Teller, another blinding grenade launcher, just like part of our dust. But now in our heavy weapon, which is probably the most notable thing that you should bring, because this is probably where all your DPS is going to come, the most you know major part of a day one raid. Uh, we already went over the red herring, but Yalahorn, obviously, if you go on a Yalahorn strat, typically you know, we want one person to run it with everybody else running five very good legendary rockets because that typically is going to have more DPS. But even if you don't, six Yalahorns is still going to be really, really good. Yalahorn is also insanely good for ad clear. Super similar, even without power for deconstruction, still it hits like a truck. Like, I would definitely recommend taking a sleeper just in case with the catalyst because uh, sleeper still might be the meta. Uh, Whisper of the Worm, uh, this still also might be, you know, really, really good if you need to sit back, just keep laying uh, damage on a boss. Like, obviously, day one raids, you're not going to be able to insta kill a boss with the best loadout in the game. But, you know, it, this is going to be really good just to sit in the back and not take damage. Then, Lament, you know, if I need to run a sword, obviously, this is going to be the most damaged sword. Then, uh, Parasite, uh, this is you know, very, very good if, you know, there's some champions or really tanky target. You can have this equipped just to instant delete it. Or if you just want to get a huge amount of damage out on the boss, then swap to something else and do some damage. You can as well. Anything like that. This is just a very, very handy weapon in pretty much every scenario. And I recommend taking Parasite and definitely getting it. Now, I also have this other rocket right here, the uh, Palmyra B, which I'm actually going to put enhanced auto loading, enhanced last impression. This is going to be a really good DPS weapon as well. If you have those two perks, basically, you just shoot the rocket, swap off of it, do damage or something else, swap back, it's going to be reloaded, and you kind of get the memo. You just keep going back and forth, and last impression will give you an insane amount of damage. I just have to craft it up. But then also just have Fallen Guillotine if I do need a sword for ad clear, if just some legendary sword, I, you might need it. Falling Guillotine is always a nice option to have, but for DPS scenarios, Lament is obviously probably going to be the better sword options. But that is for the weapons. You can run the weapons pretty much on every character, but now get into the more specific Warlock style over here. We have the new gauntlets, Osmio Mancy gloves. These are going to basically provide you additional cold snap and some other cold snap benefits, but ignore that. We're not even worried about that. If we go back to our shape battle, we're going to be running cold snap grenade. The reason we're in a cold snap is again because the exotic gives you two cold snap grenades, but we're just taking advantage of this to have two bleak watchers. 
you have two cold snap grenades to cool down, which results to two bleak watches. You can use this in two different ways. You can have pretty much a bleak watch up at all time if you use one, then that means you're going to have another one ready to use since you have two cooldowns while your other one is cooling down. So that's one way to use it just to make sure you always have one. Or you could go the more mayhem route and throw two bleak watches out and use something like a demo gun to make sure you get a grenade back just in case you finally need one and just spam grenades everywhere if you want to do that. Whichever way you want to, it's your play style. If you want to run just one, it, one is pretty much always more than enough, especially with something like a Scepter. But it, like I said, if you want to go the mayhem route, put a demo gun on there and just start spamming them everywhere. It's very, very fun, but I would recommend just having, you know, one because this is a day one raid and you want to obviously you know make sure you're in pretty much the safe scenario as possible at all times but now getting into the mods i'm actually going to be running elemental shards which was a pretty much a no-brainer since i'm running glacial harvest so basically this makes it so when i pick up a stasis shard it's going to count as the elemental well so it's going to be a stasis elemental well which is going to be really good because i'm also going to be running things like elemental shards when i pick up a elemental well that matches my subclass which is stasis I'm going to get two sacks of charger light, which is going to play into this build pretty well. Now to play into that, we're going to be running protective light. Now I know protective light did get nerfed, but let's be honest, it's still damage reduction and any amount of damage reduction in the raid is going to be really good. You could run things like, well, tenacity, if you do play a void subclass, which I would highly recommend, but if you're not playing a void subclass and can't get void wells, you know, very, very fast, Protective Light is still going to be your best option. It's 10% damage reduction, which is better than 0% damage reduction. And I would still recommend 100% taking this on a day one raid. Now, I'm also going to be running Font of Wisdom. So right here, basically, when you pick up a elemental well that matches your subclass type, you're going to get uh, increased intellect, which is going to be really good because if you actually come take a look at our stats, we're going to have 100 recovery, obviously for rifts, 100 discipline, obviously for our bleak watchers. And then we have 30 intellect. So basically this mod gives you a bunch of intellect. So if you're at 30, I'm pretty sure you're actually going to have 100 intellect. So that means I will have 100 in each of these stats, 100 recovery, 100 discipline, 100 intellect. Intellect is obviously very good for the eight scepter and our mod right here of whisper our bonds or our fragment so we can get our super back as fast as possible. So triple 100 stats is really really good just for picking up a shard and again remember once you pick up the shard you will get elemental charge or protective light and the intellect increase and then finally i'm also going to be running striking light now this is probably a weird mod because you don't really see this a lot while charge light if you defeat a combatant with a melee or sword you drain or power that's whatever you're really mainly looking for the gain damage resistance against combatants while sprinting there's multiple times in raids or just any scenario where you're trying to run away from enemy and that pesky little drag or whatever is shooting you and you die like this is going to help prevent that because while you're running you're going to get damage reduction and you're going to see a theme here with damage reduction when we get into our other mod so going back to our chest piece if you didn't see already we actually have uh thermo shock plating and void resistance on so this is actually giving you reduced incoming solar damage and arc damage and this one's giving you reduced incoming void damage there's no way to actually get a stasis damage with these three so i just went for the other three main ones so we have you know void solar and arc resistance on this one armor set which is crazy this armor piece is literally just a defensive armor piece because obviously you have that plus protective light you're going to be very very tanky and then again with our striking light you're also be very tanky when you're sprinting then for other mods right here i do have a pulse rifle loader socket in right here but i honestly just let this open you know five slots if there is champions i can put whatever champion mod i need there there's a glaive in there uh obviously a reload perks if you want to you know take a reload speed for you know for a weapon anything like that but obviously this is mainly for champion mods if you do need to run champion mods then i'm also i'm running trace rifle ammo finder again i'm gonna run an acre scepter most of the time just to kill everything so i want as much ammo as i can with you know rocket launcher scavenger trace rifle scavenger you know for rockets and trace rifles and that is pretty much it i have outreach on here just to proc the secondary uh effect of this it doesn't really do much but you know that's on here and that's the build like this is very much focused on crowd control with you know controlling everything with stasis freezing everything the damage resistance for all three elements which is insanely good on top of the damage resistance with strike and light and protective light just in case and you're always going to be charged light all the time due to elemental shards and that again is going to give you 100 intellect with this mod and on top of that you're going to have protective light always proc and it's just a very very tanky defensive play style build and that's what you need in a day one build now since i am a warlock and for all the people out there that do play warlock and know you're pretty much going to be the well bought for dps scenarios i do have access to you just immediately swap you know i can swap over to solar i can swap to this arm piece right here and swap to moon faction boots i still have 100 recovery and 100 
discipline so i can you know obviously throw a hill grenade or a rift that i need to throw down and this is still going to work the exact same way except now instead of using elemental shards to get charged light i'm actually going to swap to uh, taking charge right here so the boots have taken charge and then i also have stacks on stacks so whenever i do become charge light instead of getting one stack i'm going to get two stacks of charger light so again you just get an exact charge of light so that this is going to be really, really good and play just like the elemental charge type build so obviously when you picked up a stasis shard because it matched your subclass you're getting two stacks of charge of light so now we just pick up a orb you're going to get two stacks of charge of light and since this is the dps you know Phase. everybody's popping super everybody's generating orbs so you're always going to be able to proc protective light even once you have this build on right here and then again you might not even have to do this you might have another well warlock that does it you maybe only need one but there's a pretty good chance if you have multiple warlocks you're pretty much always going to be running this at some point so this is just good to know and everything else can just stay the same the only thing that really isn't taken advantage of right here is font of wisdom so if you know you want to change this out once you swap over to a dps phase you can change it to whatever you want but this should be more than enough and then again obviously for the main parts and everything you're pretty much going to be running this the whole time just for act clear but that is going to pretty much do it for my day one build that is kind of going over everything that you guys wanted to see again i do have a void build that i will also be taking into the raid day one but that is going to be in a completely different video you can kind of run that in anything but this is specifically for in-game content or things like the day one raid and i really hope this helped you guys out understand a lot about the play style or if you don't even play warlock and you just watch the weapon part i hope you guys enjoyed that and learned some stuff but if you do play warlock let me know if you're gonna run something like this in day one i know there's a bunch of different play styles you can do you can do stasis turret you can even do you know void 3.0 now you can do constant wells which is always good it just depends on your play style the solar is way more for healing the stasis is way more for crowd control and the void is way more for just killing whichever one you like the most you know stick with that this is going to be me though let me know what you guys are going to run in the comments but thank you all so much for watching good luck in the raid and i will see you in the next one Peace.